For six decades, Coronation Street has given us some of the most memorable characters on television. I'll tell you something, there's a lot of fellas coming here fancy me. Point him out to me, will you? Why, what will you do? Kick his guide, Doug. Between you and me, she's always been quicker at getting in bed than getting out. There's not a lot on telly either, is there? And for many of us... Get out! It's Weatherfield's baddies that have kept us entertained. <laughs> Tonight, we don our leather gloves and grab the closest blunt object to hand as we celebrate Coronation Street's villains. I'm the bad guy. Yes, there is definitely something in the water in Weatherfield as Coronation Street continues to be cursed with villains and dastardly deeds. You really, Mike? From Joe Donnelly's carol concert with a twist... All is calm. Come on, Stanley, sing it louder. Put your foot on it, Stanley! Beyond the virgin mother and child. ..to Maya Sharma's renovation of the corner shop. Corey has certainly had some memorable baddies. Ooh. But who is the baddest of the lot? There's been some pretty terrifying folk living on that famous old street, and here's a look at some of the worst. Never trust me again, and I will kill you. Can't swim. Good. Think about it. You're a man. No, but this is it. I'm not. I'm a school teacher. What goes around comes around. Me and you know. closer, and we all go up. I'm untouchable. Either you drive, or your little sister becomes an internet porn star. You've got plenty to lose. I got it too. You're not even the best I've had this week. I try and make it quicker. But for one of the most memorable, we have to go back to 1986. And in the year that gave us the Hand of God, the M25 and Top Gun, it was also responsible for introducing us to a genuine Cory bad guy, Mr Alan Bradley. You always did have a talent for needling me, didn't you? I just get you into trouble again, you know? Alan arrived on the street and made an instant impression on Rita. Oh, speak of the devil. Hello. I can't stay long. I'm parked on a bus stop. How do you feel about dining out in style tonight? And I won't take no for an answer. Oh, two nights on the trot? Don't know whether I can keep up the pace. But being as I've only got beef burgers or fish fingers for his tea, go on, you've talked me into it. Good, cos I've already booked the table. <laughs> but things began to take a turn when he stole the deeds to Rita's house, which, as everybody knows, are always kept in an old biscuit tin on the sideboard. He also impersonated her dead husband to get his hands on some cash. And when Rita found out, Alan's dark side was finally uncovered. Lied and plotted and manipulated and betrayed. All oh, right, so I'm no angel. I've been to the building society. I've put them straight. You've lied and you've cheated. But you'll not walk away from this with a smile on your face. You think you've fixed me, don't you? You're finished, Alan. You've had a charmed life, and now your time's up. You bitch! You stupid bastard! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Maybe your time's up and all! <laughs> You'd put me away no, for a no. few lousy quid, no. would you? Rita knew what she had to do. She needed to hide and not draw attention to herself, so she got herself a discreet, low-key job as a lounge singer in Blackpool. Me, though I've loved you for a million years And 
If I thought our love was ending I'd find myself drowning in my own tears But wily old Alan was soon racing up the M55 to corner Rita at the Strand Hotel. Cue one of the most famous scenes in Corrie history. Get in the car. Thankfully, Rita and her wonderful plastic Mac survived the ordeal. The episode went down as a Corrie classic. The hotel was even bestowed with its own blue plaque to commemorate the event. And Peter Kay paid a sneaky tribute to the scene in Phoenix Nights. People never looked at Blackpool, trams or men named Alan in the same way again. As far as nicknames go, Norman Bates with a briefcase is a pretty good one. And it does a fantastic job of describing our next Corrie villain. It is, of course, the slayer of ex-wives and business partners, the man who left blood on the floor at number four, Mr Richard Hillman. Now, if we were to try and cover all of Richard's transgressions, we would have to apply for an extended running time. So let's concentrate on his more severe crimes. Richard's victims included one ex-business partner. Get lost, Dougie. You had a chance and you blew it. Oh, come on, Richard! Please, we can't leave... <laughs> 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 In fairness, he wasn't responsible for Dougie Ferguson's death. We didn't exactly rush to help him either. Go on, Richard, just one more nine. Oh, forget it. 